Welcome to the Home Service Expert, where each week, Tommy chats with world-class entrepreneurs and experts in various fields like marketing, sales, hiring, and leadership to find out what's really behind their success in business. Now, your host, the Home Service Millionaire, Tommy Mello. All right, welcome back to the Home Service Expert. My name is Tommy Mello, and today I'm with my homeboy, Dave Carroll. I met this guy... um, through this guy Anthony's roofing convention. He had a huge convention in town. My buddy Josh Parker, or uh, not Parker, Kelly. Josh Kelly with yeah. Parker and Sons. Yes, That's yes, what, yes. So yes. Josh Kelly with Parker and Sons says, you got to meet this guy, Dave Carroll. So Dave's an expert in direct mail marketing, market research, real estate marketing, email marketing, audience targeting, and marketing lists. He's based out of Afton, Minnesota. He's visiting the shop here. Um, he's come to town a couple times, yeah. kicking at the apartments. Yeah. Uh, he owns a company called Dope, Dope Marketing. Uh, he's the CEO of Dope Marketing. He's also the CEO of A Type Data, uh, Dope Marketing 360 or Dope 360 Marketing. That's our. We'll talk about it. It's our software product for Dope okay. Marketing. Yep. And then Lion's Share Maintenance, which is a uh, exterior well, cleaning, home service. That's where we really cut our teeth in our entrepreneurial journey. The first business I started was Lion Share. Cool. So, like I said, he knows everything about marketing. He started his first business when he was 24, which is now 15 employees and uh, about 1.2 million in sales per year. Right right and after that, he started his first data compiling business in 2015. A-Type Data provides business and consumer data lists, including postal, telemarketing, email, information systems to businesses that want to market their services to new customers. He started doing marketing after seeing that data businesses needed a front-facing marketing business to go with. He's passionate about direct mail, data, and true automation of traditional marketing. So tell everybody how you really got into the business of uh, direct mail. You do yard signs for me, you do a lot of stuff. Yeah, so why don't yeah, you just yeah. tell us your entrepreneurial journey. So what happened for me was like, you know, like most of us getting started out in like our early 20s or whatever. Uh, I remember when I started our cleaning company, it was me and, me and it took me and four guys to carry a 24 foot ladder on a Home Depot to my mom's house to start our window cleaning business. You know, we had no clue what we were doing. And like most people, you know, this was in the days like, Facebook was just getting going, but it was a lot of like the forums and stuff like oh, yeah. that. You know, some of the old school guys, the dinosaurs. And what I saw very quickly was just like, you don't need to reinvent the wheel with business. It's like you look at the guys who are in a position that you want to be in and steal like an artist. You know, look at someone that someone like Tommy is doing right. How can I put my spin on it and apply my definition of success to, you know, whatever vertical I'm in? So in Lion Share, I saw very quickly that it was just like being aggressive and pushing hard. I'm not the first guy to invent a cleaning business. So it was like, I knew I didn't have to reinvent the wheel, but the ability to see, you know, I, I'm risk adverse, I'm aggressive. I like to market, I like to advertise, I like to push. If you told me that you had a good idea and it cost me money, I didn't have that money, I'm gonna go sell a kidney. Like I'm gonna go figure it out, how to make that happen. And so like, for me, where I had an epiphany, we talk about, you know, fast forward, we, 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 we have a local business, we gotta figure out how to market, right? How to generate leads, how to hire people, how to do all this basic stuff. And for me, it was like, I had an epiphany when I saw the Facebook targeting that was available, right? You know, 10 years ago, we were getting into this. It was the same data that you could buy on a mailing list, you know, homeowners with a home value with a certain number of kids. And it hit me that it was like best practices now is combining traditional advertising with digital advertising and be able to like, Put your customers on that journey to take them by, what are we trying to do? I want to take you by the hand, Tommy. I want to walk you down this path to get you to swipe your credit card. And the way to do that is to establish trust. And how do you establish trust? You put something nice and shiny that feels good in someone's hands. Maybe they see a yard sign. Maybe they see a Facebook ad. So we go to like best practices nowadays. What hit me in the face right away in my entrepreneurial journey was like, I need to apply best practices in cross-channel marketing to create trust with customers. Because then the business you're in is kind of relative, right? You mm. create that trust and the journey is kind of all the same, but perception outweighs reality. A first impression lasts forever. And if you look like a million, you talk like a million, you smell like a million, and you show up and you do what you're supposed to, somebody sign that check for a million bucks. Mm, I love it. Well, I'll tell you what. Cleaning houses is a tough business. I mean, it's not yeah. a big ticket item. Either it's garage doors for that matter, but... It's, it is scalable, I've seen some guys do it, but you kind of figured out that you really wanted to be more on the marketing side. So I've heard from people 
that direct marketing is dying. I've also heard that cash was going to be gone in tw- two, th- 2000. <laughs> right. So, you know, talk to me about the naysayers of direct mail and yard signs and uh, business analytics that help you really focus on the right avatar for direct marketing. Yeah, so like we talked about this a lot in private is like customer acquisition costs, right? We can just, you have all the leads in the world, but what do they cost you and what is that lead bringing home? And what I found is that watching some, some people that were very successful before we got into anything we were doing, we started very quickly in our business sending about, you know, first it was 10,000, then 25,000, then 50,000, then 100,000 pieces of direct mail every month. When we would look at, you know, the cost to do that, it was one of our highest invoices, right? Stamps aren't cheap, printing isn't cheap, especially when you compare it to something like Facebook. But the whole thing for me was like understanding that our best customers would come from the areas we would target consistently with direct mail. And it's not a one and done, I'm gonna send out one postcard campaign, it's gonna work or it's not, and if it didn't work, it's not for me and I'm not about, it was like watching the guys that were previously successful, one of the things I would see is they were consistently marketing to targeted areas in their, in their service area. Whether you have one location or multiple locations, you can drill down on these zip codes and use the mail to really focus on them. And so for me, it was like, Being able to understand and recognize, I expedited a little bit, you know, we might have spent a little bit more than most in their second, third, fourth year when I look back at scaling that cleaning business, but it was like when I could see month over month our best, most high paying customers were coming from direct mail, it wasn't my favorite invoice to pay every month until I saw it was that, that it was the highest and my most favorite invoice to pay every month. You know, when I think about people that really are still looking at their mail, it's probably a little bit older demographic. I don't think it's a 22-year-old. Correct. And uh, they have money, and they like things fixed correctly. Yep. They like things done right. They've been burned in the past. Absolutely. So I think that's a great point. You know, tell me, there's a lot of pros to direct marketing. What are some of the drawbacks that you see? It's, I mean, it's expensive. If you're just getting started off, or maybe like you don't have the biggest marketing budget, or maybe your business has been like traditionally based a lot off referrals or things like that, and you're looking for new ways to advertise, if you're to line up every single possible way, right? You can go put out flyers or have kids in college go knock door, you know, whatever. It's relatively cost effective. Maybe you can run Facebook or Instagram ads, or maybe you have another method. You're getting on next door, like we were talking about the other night. But it's like. Direct mail, one of the downfalls is the cost. You know, it's not going to be this magic wand. We talk about this a lot in advertising, right? It's not some magic thing where you're like, I'm going to run an advertising campaign tomorrow. Now my business is going to change forever. That's not necessarily the case. The thing to know or understand about direct marketing, specifically direct mail, is like you're going to have to do this a couple times to build up your audience, to build up the trust because good marketing creates trust. And if you can establish trust with a customer, it might be a little bit more expensive to do that for direct mail. So that's what I would see if one of the downfalls, you know, you gotta start somewhere. So even if it's just sending 5,000 pieces a month versus 50,000 pieces a month, having that plan or that progression to get it there, if you're as impatient as I am and you're watching this, because the last thing I ever want to do is wait for anything to happen. It's like direct mail, you might have to plant some seeds, water those seeds, talk to them in the morning, get them to grow a little bit. But if you're patient enough and take the time, it'll work. But I'd say that's one of the one of the biggest you know downfalls or negatives is the cost and the time that it takes to see it come to fruition. So most people don't realize how detailed you could get. I mean, you could go age, male, female. You can even find out basically anything you can find out from Google Analytics or Facebook. Um, you can find out and, and mail to these people. So tell, tell me some of the, the narrowed down lists. Explain to us a little bit how you can get segmented. Because yeah. Is, yeah. So lists are cool. And like, for, I'm, just like, I'm the biggest nerd you guys have ever met. You've ever met. I mean, when it comes to lists and yeah. the spreadsheets. And <laughs> so it's like, like when, when you go to how you can target people, let's go to something pretty simple, right? Value of the home, age of the homeowner, maybe how long they've lived You somewhere. can even do if they just refinanced. Like we would know that month to date, uh, new yeah. movers, new home buyers Mo- are new, really new cool. Home buyers, yeah. We've talked about that a lot. Those type of campaigns are really powerful. Um, being able to put a list by zip code of every person that purchased a home in that zip code, and that list happens every month. Um, new moms, square feet, square footage. You'll know if they have two uh, air conditioning units, three air condi- by the square the, feet. Oh, for the HVAC guys, that's huge. Yeah, the, the square footage of the home. Because what is it? 
3,500 square feet, 4,000 square feet. That's you have another, a double. That's another a double. unit. Sometimes yeah. it's a mini split they have. Yeah. And then, Multi-unit yeah. versus single family going after property owners, like absentee owners. Oh, you're getting really big. You know I got the real estate business. There you go. I mean, you're, you're really getting big on your little secret here. I'm going to let it out of the bag is the, the Google Street View. Oh, man. That's some powerful stuff. So we're able to take a list of, let's say Tommy gives us a list of addresses of 10,000 addresses. We can give you back about 90% of the image of the front of that home, and we can put that on an envelope or you know you see like your bills come every month they have the window we could put an insert with the front of the home in the insert with like a custom a custom bid like another really cool thing we do uh variable printing so let's say you have your customer list like a spreadsheet right let's just use an example let's say it's like you guys are huge in uh, pest control down here in arizona everyone's yep. got a spray for scorpions or whatever so let's say you have a, a quarter acre a half acre or a full acre and you know your cost that you're gonna charge that person or enough to give them an offer on a postcard. If you gave us a spreadsheet, you know, first name, last name, address, city, state, zip. And you could help. In the last, yeah, we can help do all that, but in the last column, let's say you put the price for each individual person, we could put that price dynamically on individual postcards. Mm -hmm. So everyone's got like a unique or a custom offer type of thing. So, so you're more, as what we talked about yesterday at the bowling alley, was uh, you, uh, you're really specializing in really making a very particular message, like a very focused message. And that what's, so, so here's a question I have, and this is, you've got three, you got a few different variables here. You could do a postcard, or you could have a mail piece that people open. Yeah. And then you could have, see, I don't open anything if it looks, if it's not handwritten and it's in, but I'll look at a postcard, obviously. But so, you guys are doing cool stuff with that handwritten. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll try yeah. some stuff out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so talk to me a little bit about, do postcards work? What's the best postcard? Are they big? Are they jumbo? Are they small? What's on them? Is there anything handwritten? Because you could print that looks like handwriting. Correct. So tell me, what is the secret about giving an amazing postcard? Like what? Is it an eight by 11 or what, what's the right size? So the idea where, where you want to start when you look at like any marketing campaign is like, like the, the omni touch, the cross channel approach, right? You want to make your postcards look like your website, look like your door hangers, look like your, your business cards. So the idea with direct mail is you want to mail at least once a month at least once a month when you have your targeted list or your targeted area. And then you wanna switch it up a little bit. So I like to start off with either a six by nine or an eight and a half by 11 postcard. Just something that's kind of that handshake, that first touch establishing that branding. I'll send a postcard like that two to three times once a month. So let's say, let's use even numbers. Once a month for three months. So we're gonna send three postcards that are basically the same the only thing we're really changing up, Tommy, is the offer. We want to see if an offer, whether it's, you know, maintenance plan for 19 bucks, 100 bucks off multiple services, or combine this and get that. We want to give a different offer to see what the audience in that area is responding to. Because if I'm going to send Tommy a postcard once a month for three months, one of those cards he's probably going to respond to. So after three months, I can see what offer was claimed the most by my audience and then from there i'm going to use that data you know use what happened and then i'm going to use that offer that stuck the best and keep using variations well, just a b testing exactly so i was on a podcast about two weeks ago and a guy stayed afterwards with me and he gave me a big secret he said the best ads that work are the get a new garage or get a new ac unit get a new roof and it's a crazy financing deal over like 10 yeah, years. So yeah. So it's the financing, the ARP. It's what, look, who spends the most out of anybody? I'd say it's either car dealerships or furniture stores. Okay. And that, you know, that's what they're doing. You see like. Looking at who's in your mailbox. Well, like who's. But, but the offers are always for little down. Yeah. And a small payment per yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you're a big data guy. I've got a lot of questions here about a lot of stuff, but data data scares a lot of people and data is very, very powerful when used right. My biggest thing is don't think getting the right clients work if you don't have the trained technicians to show up. Amen. So, so many people spend a fortune on marketing and they go, I need customers that convert better with higher tickets. You need to train your employees more. 
So that's a big misconception, but I want to talk about data. Uh, talk to me about a bit, the biggest misconceptions when it comes to data. That it's perfect. That when you buy a list, it's going to be 100% accurate. It doesn't matter where you get your list. It could be from one of the big shops, right? At Info USA, a Melissa data, all the way down to Dave or Tommy, the data broker. Your list is never going to be perfect. Like every phone number is not going to be accurate. Every email isn't going to be deliverable because things change. And it all goes back to the power of the source, right? If Let's go to a business list. We sell a lot of lists of like property managers and facility managers and people that want to get in front of more commercial work. Well, the thing is, if, if Dave worked at McDonald's and Dave got let go three weeks ago, when did McDonald's update their database? Maybe it happens every three months. Maybe it happens every year. And so it's like understanding that when you purchase a list, you never want to buy your data from the cheapest source because more likely than not, that's going to mean it's like outdated or it's old, it's been sold a hundred times or whatever. Buying a list is simply expediting the fact of you building a list yourself. Now that doesn't mean that guys like me and you that have data are going to scrape Google or something and just getting all the Google My Business listings and putting them on a list and selling them to someone. We license databases. So like big aggregators of data. We go find them, we pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars a year so we can internalize, put that stuff together and then resell it to people and kind of give them a path to use it. So one of the biggest misconceptions of data is that I bought a list and some of the phone numbers aren't valid and I got screwed over. It's like, that's not the case. You want to have a good rapport with your data vendor so you can ask, hey Dave, uh, I bought this list of property managers. I'm like, Tommy, those phone numbers are going to be about 80% valid. You know. Property managers turn over as much as oh, fast yeah. food restaurants. You know, these people leave positions or jump ship. There was a better offer, right? You've had technicians in your garage door oh, company yeah. go to greener pack, you know, whatever they thought was a better. Same thing in every vertical. So data's never perfect, but it's also like you can't buy a list and try one thing. Well, I bought a list of emails. I sent out one email. It didn't work. So I don't buy lists anymore. That doesn't you know, work. Hold on here. You, you said something important. <laughs> And you, you're going to introduce me to this guy. We're not going to go into details, but let's talk about getting emails into the inbox so they get yep. viewed and click through. Yep. So that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing. That's, that's a, a job. Really tough thing. That's a job yeah. in itself. Now, the best thing to do if you are a small or medium sized business, right? You're going to buy a couple thousand contacts or something like that. The worst thing you can do is like dump those into MailChimp. Send oh, yeah, them you, out you, and you, like, you, no, you're just, you're going to break down everything. Servers, servers exactly. Get... The best thing you can do is treat this thing like your favorite ex-girlfriend before she broke up with you. Like very gentle, very delicate. Take her on a date. One to one. I want to sit down with this email list and I'm going to set, I'm going to, if I buy an email list today of a thousand people. You're sending out five a day. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cherry pick the top con the businesses I know, the ones I've wanted to work for, that, that building I drive by everywhere on my way to the office, I'm like, I want to get that thing. I'm going to pick those things out of the list and I'm going to target those specifically. Something very intimate. I'm going to, what's, what's the, I'm going to bring them flowers. I'm going to, I'm going to wine them and dine them. I'm going to, like, hypothetically, right? I'm going to send a, I'm going to send a personalized email, reaching out, introducing myself. Then I'm going to send them a piece of mail. Then I'm going to call them and ask them if they got the piece of mail that I sent them. It's figuring out like where the value is. But anytime that I'm working with a list in any of my businesses, I like to take the top 10, 20, 30% and I get intimate with it. I mean, I massage it. I warm it up. I get it ready. Now, the other part of the list where it's like, let's use an analogy that I'm pretty familiar with, like gutter cleaning season is coming up in the Twin Cities, right? We do a couple hundred grand in gutter cleaning a year. What's my job with a list of property managers? Hey, Karen, you got gutters? I'm Dave. We can pr provide a bid in 48 hours. We don't need to come out. You never need to talk to me. You have 100 problems during the day. I can solve seven of them perfectly, Karen. Let me clean your stuff. Like that email, just going out direct, that's where you can get into like some broader email. We talked about getting you with my buddy. You know, the big email delivery where it's a broad message and you don't care as much if a couple go to spam or a couple don't hit, hit the inbox. But when I look at that list and I got my winners, the, the hot chicks at the party type of thing, I want to spend my time on those girls. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come bring them, bring them a drink, say hi, introduce myself <laughs> to their friend, like all that stuff. Same deal. So warm it up where it's valuable. But the other ones, when we go into email delivery, it's like you want to pick the people that you make sure the emails get in the inbox. 
So you've got email marketing. So when I talk to you, when you were, this is three trips ago now, um, you said you hit people from a multiple angles. So talk to me a little bit about getting on not just a direct mail, yep. but hitting them with a Facebook message, then hitting them with, tell me the different ways to hit people. Yep, so one of my favorite strategies, it's a you know, cross-channel marketing campaign. What I like to do is I get some stuff printed. Let's say I'm gonna do uh, folders to property managers. So I'm gonna get those printed first. What I'm gonna do is record a video, and I'm gonna put that on Facebook. Uh, it's gonna be a video of me holding the folder. I'm gonna upload the list of property managers into Facebook, so I'm showing them the ads. Hey, this is Dave over at Lion Share Maintenance. You might be getting this in the mail in the next couple weeks. Check this in, I'm holding it, I'm playing with it, I'm talking about it. I'm warming them up, I'm building awareness. Then I'm gonna send them the folder. They're gonna get that in the mail. I'm gonna track it. I know I'm, you know, I'm the mail house. I know when that postcard gets to Tommy, the property manager's office, when I see that delivery, you know what I'm gonna do the next day? I'm gonna pick up the phone. Hey, can I talk to Tommy? Tommy, did you get that folder I sent over? You know what, Dave? I've been seeing your Facebook ads and I got that folder. You're a pretty slick guy. I should probably give you my business. Like, it's kind of that yeah. easy. <laughs> what about um, text message marketing? Because this is, uh, this is something that we dabble with, yeah. you know, and, and I just know I'm too big now. I think it was uh, Midas that got hit with like millions of dollars. I know a couple. I know. I know. Uh, I know a couple big businesses that got hit with some fines, million dollar fines because of this stuff. I also know beady eyed weirdos that have been doing this stuff for years that just happen to not get in trouble. So we don't advise that. But the idea with text message marketing is there are some laws, and the laws exist because you know we can't you can't steal from people. It's not allowed. You go to jail. And so what happens if Tommy's a broke guy with a prepaid cell phone, and Dave, the savvy marketer, gets a hold of Tommy's cell phone number. And every time Tommy gets a text message, it costs him a quarter off his prepaid cell phone plan. If I send Tommy a text message that he did not opt in for, he didn't fill out a form, he didn't ask for more info, he didn't want anything to do with me, and I send him a text message and it cost him a quarter, I just robbed Tommy as a marketer. That's why people are getting in trouble, that's why these laws exist. Mm, I didn't know and so that. text message marketing, it's very good for communication on an opted in list. If we're going to play totally by the rules here, it's like you got to get, you know, when you go to websites and say, do you agree to my cookies, privacy policy, share your location? What well, you know, all these indications we've been getting all of 2020 because all these laws have been updated recently. You're saying, I agree. And if you say, I agree on your website, my website, whatever, you're opening up the possibility to get contacted. Now, if you have a savvy marketer, and they know how to take a website visitor and match their IP address and know how to pull a cell phone from that. When you click those cookies, you made it okay for me to send you a text mm, message. Interesting. Now, broad 101, I would not advise home <laughs> service companies or any local businesses to just go get a list of cell phone numbers and start blasting out rando text messages. You know, on that note, every single person, if you're able to build forms in your CRM, Get them to click a separate box and initial or sign by it because even if I even if I get you on the phone and then I've talked to attorneys, if I get you on the phone and I say, hey Dave, listen, is it okay to send you text messages anytime we get really good specials for our company? Even if I own that recording, that's not still that's still it? you you so so all I would recommend the white hat in me, the white angel yep, says yep, yep. get an opt-in, get them to click a box or say yes. And, and, and get as much meat in that bone as possible. Right. Because, you know, that's, it's just, but it, texting is the best. You're, you're an attorney away. You're one attorney away from texting a guy to end up with a million dollar lawsuit. And I don't think any of us want that to happen. So, so not to scare people, I just want to spend another minute on this, is what, what certain people do is lawyers build a practice on this. They, they literally don't. build class action lawsuits. Yep. This is all they do. Yep. It's just like when you see those commercials that say, you know, have you used baby powder? Roundup or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so we know how that goes. But, um, you know, I'm servicing 7,000 customers a month. And if I get them to opt in, you, you, the coolest thing is it's a very, very good thing to do, but you can't abuse it. Where direct mail, you could get kind of, you could do a lot. Yes. I have the same realtors. Here's what I recommend, especially with realtors, yep. is you keep hitting the homes. You're a specialist in that neighborhood. Bingo. And you hit every single month. Bingo. Every single month you become, they, got, they start, well, my neighbors are using that person. 
Cool. So, and then you show the houses that sold in your area and how much you could get per square foot. One fascinating statistic with text message marketing or text messages in general, yeah. it was a, uh, oh, who the heck did this? It was like Yoast or Unbounce, one of those. 98.9% of text messages get are read. Res no, responded to. Not even read. Mm. We know we've been left on read before. <laughs> but I don't respond to the crap. I mean, I must get how many from whether it's Trump every, or Biden or whatever. Right, I get a right. million of these personal text messages. So not throw throw those ones out the personal window. Personal text. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're sent to text, but a personal text is still. I used a one garage door three months ago, and a rep texted me to ask how I was going, or a new bonus, or we're doing a weather stripping, whatever. Like. That text message falls into that category. You know, I like the idea of I can get phones now from Sprint for like under twenty bucks a month, and having CSRs or your dispatchers yeah. just to send out each of them send ten messages a day Boop. from that phone. Yep. Or just get a Google number, Google Voice, and, and get on voice there with out of that one. And, yeah. And use the we use, use the app. Uh, we use Ring Central in our in one of our businesses. Oh, okay. And you're allowed. You can't do mass text messages out of Ring Central. Ring Central is the, the phone system that we use. Right. But you can, once someone's in your contact and you've communicated with them, you can send them out an individual text message. So we set a reminder in Ring Central after a certain amount of time that says it hasn't been touched, it's a quick follow up from one of our assistants doing a, a text message check in. It. So it's continuing the conversation. Text message marketing might not be the best avenue for like cold marketing. You don't want to just go get a list of homeowners yep. with million dollar homes and bang on them with text message marketing. But. If you get these people, let's say you run Facebook ads to people and you got a form filled out, $50 coupon if you fill out this form off your next garage door install or whatever, well, now you got an opt in. Yep. Now you got a text message, now you got a cell phone. Now you can communicate with them via text message, which brings me, you know, one of my favorite ways to market right now? Tell me. Ringless voicemails. Is there, now I just heard there's a law against that. Uh, so, I'm not a lawyer, Tommy's not a lawyer. Look this I, up with your- I like ringless voicemails. Ringless voicemails, we're still playing in a gray area. So the last I've heard, there was some legislation in California like there always is, right? Sorry guys in Cali, you guys nah. get the short end of the nah. stick. Nah. I heard about a little something in Florida going on, but as far as I understand right now, when you send someone a ringless voicemail, and what is a ringless voicemail? It just bypasses the uh, rings. And it leaves a voicemail, then it pops up on your phone with me, it's Google, that pops up with an email and I listen to it. You're sending an audio recording, an MP4 file, right to the voicemail, bypassing the whole phone system. What that means is, well we know we didn't text you, right? I didn't take your money, it doesn't cost you money to check your voicemail. I didn't violate the Do Not Call Act, and again, look this up for your area, because I didn't call you. You couldn't answer the phone when it rang and get a human because it's a recording. And so what that means is there's this gray area and we use this a lot for direct mail, Tommy. I'll send out, let's say to Scottsdale, I'm gonna send a mailing to Scottsdale, right? And I'm gonna track the mailing. I know it hit homes on Tuesday. What am I doing Wednesday and Thursday? I'm gonna send a ringless. Hey, this is Dave over at A1 Garage Doors. And if you check your mailbox, we sent you a postcard the other day for a $19 maintenance plan that we have. If you have any questions, give me a call directly at 555 So we're putting together a cross-channel marketing campaign using a direct mail list. We're gonna add cell phones. We can usually get about 60% cell phone numbers on a direct mail list. So for every thousand people, we can get 600 cell phone numbers, something like that. So we're gonna send a ringless voicemail to the people that we sent the postcard to following up, providing value, giving a touch, and solving a problem for one of these potential customers. That's pretty good stuff. And then I'm buying yard signs from you, yeah. and you got me a killer deal, and um, they're very nice yard signs. I gotta tell you, um, I, I'm all about quality. My, my whole My whole brand is about quality. Absolutely. So how many people, you know, what, what if I wanted to order a couple hundred yard signs, and, and how many colors, and what is the best price, what are the sizes, how do the yeah. stakes, let's go into the yard sign. So one really cool thing, uh, we have a yard sign playbook that I actually wrote. It's a quick guide, it's like a 10 page thing that goes over a bunch of cool strategies. We're gonna give that to the audience for yep, free. Yep, we'll put the link it's on there. It's gonna be in yep. the link. Absolutely. And so in the yard sign playbook, what we cover is like some of the good strategies. So for yard signs, you're gonna have two types of businesses. Some of you guys, girls might be in the middle or whatever, but two types of businesses. 
you're either very aggressive like me and Tommy, or maybe you're a little bit more conservative on this side. So let's talk about guys like Tommy and myself first, a little bit more aggressively like to push. I like to do yard signs when you get off the freeway at the stoplight. I like to put a sign right there at the light because you know people are stopping. Like if you're the type of person that's not just gonna put these in your customer's yards, but instead you're gonna get aggressive. You're gonna paint the town, right? Like my guys in my cleaning company, they get bonuses if the city's calling us complaining that there's signs all over the place. We know they're doing a good job. They're, they're getting the word out or whatever. So the idea is first, you wanna do it on freeway exits at stoplights. And if you have those freeway exits going into those good neighborhoods or good areas, do two. Cause you know those lights are backed up. You don't gotta sit through two lights. Do one like 50 feet back and then one right at the light because the people will stop, they're sitting there. Oh man, my wife was telling me to get the garage door looked at cause it was squeaking or maybe I, I needed my gutters cleaned. You know, whatever the case was, they're gonna stop. They're gonna take a photo. They're gonna call you another great spot to put signs in the shopping centers, especially right now with everything going on in the world and the masks and the COVID or whatever, go put them in the parking lot at like Target or high-end grocery stores like Whole Foods because the employees aren't going out in the parking lots to pull, you know, you know the stop signs inside of the parking lots? You're putting them there. I used to, <laughs> hey, I used to get up on my six foot ladder and no. I used to put them higher than anybody could get them. You can't. Yeah, yeah, no, that's just, the harder they are to put somewhere, the harder they are for Dude, someone to Dude, I used to, to zip tie say, these things to fence it. Like the, anything you can think of, right? <laughs> and again, everyone's going to have their level of risk adversity or how hard they want to go. But the idea is that in the most simplistic approach, there is a couple, you know, yard signs are a blank canvas. You can have huge ones. We did some pretty, you guys got the 24 by 24, which, you know, not always necessary. 18 by 24 is the most standard sign you'll ever see. 18 by 24. They have smaller signs that are like the 18 by 12s. Smaller the signs, less the cost. Excuse me, bigger the signs, the higher the cost. And the, the, the thing to remember is that shipping bigger signs is gonna be more expensive. So my advice is stay with an 18 by 24, 100 signs after shipping, when you get the stakes, everything, 500, 550 bucks. Like so this, five, 550. Yeah, so. five, 550 for 100 signs, something like that. Like all good things in life, you buy more, the discounts go down with volume. So I'll, I'll teach everybody a secret. If you ever want to build a list for people looking to buy a house for cash, you, you and I, I fell, this is something they teach in real estate, but what they do is they write in a big magic marker and they put on there, selling a house for 185,000 needs work. They put the phone number, leave your voicemail. Yep. And all they're doing is collecting data of people interested in cash. They're building that's a list. It. That's all they're doing. A list of buyers. A list of buyers. Yep. That's it. Every single person looking at that sign and it says, I can make money. I want to be a flipper. That's and it. And they just build a huge list in that area. And it's now they're just beating on that list. Now that. And what happened? They went online afterwards, fill out a form, and now they're texting them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I, I don't know how. I didn't, you know, I'm not a. I don't have time to sue somebody for this crap, but I get probably 10 a day and most of the time, Me too what's now. the universal yep. word to get out of them? Stop. 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 Yep. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you, you said you have some software. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So what our, what our job is at Dope Marketing is to make direct mail and traditional marketing easy. And so one of the things we did is we built a platform. You know, if, if Tommy wants to go send a direct mail uh, campaign today, He's got to go find a list. He's got to work with a designer. He's got to get everything printed. He's got to work with a mail house. I mean, these campaigns can take weeks, if not months to put together. We built a software where you can send a mailing campaign out in 20 seconds. Upload a list, use our custom designs, variable data, changing things out, whatever, press a button, the direct mail is getting sent. It can get to houses in five days. We added to this, so Tommy, you've heard of uh, Every Door Direct Mail, EDDM before, yeah. right? So every door direct mail for any of you guys are familiar, you go on, you pick your post, you pick a zip code, pick your postal routes that you're going to send to. Then you got to get the cards printed. They get sent to your house or your office. You got to go on the USPS site, uh, pull down the, the facing slips, write them all out, put them in, face yep. them, take them to the post office. I mean, this thing's a nightmare. We used to do a hundred thousand of these a month. We automated EDDM in this same platform where you can upload a list or get a list from us and send mail like that. We have a partnership with the post office. You can come on, pick the carrier routes you want, upload your artwork, we print them, we drop ship them right to the post yeah. office. So it doesn't matter if we're printing in Minneapolis, drop shipping them right here down in Phoenix or whatever, 
fast, easy, trackable, every door direct mail, simple. And then the cherry on top is our neighborhood blitz. We allow you to come in, put in an address and say, I want to send 25, 50, 100, 500 cards around this area. And we let you filter by value of home, length of residence, and if they're a homeowner or renter. So if you do a garage door job and you want to send a first class postcard with an image of that house or with the, with the A1 logo or whatever it is to 500 homes and the postcards hit within five days, boom, neighborhood blitz. So it's, it's always first class. Neighborhood blitz is always first class. The other mailings, you have the option to go first class or standard, but neighborhood blitz, because of that urgency, always first class. So obviously being in the window washing Christmas light, you're familiar with uh, Josh Latimer? Yeah, of course. Good buddy. So, yeah, he's a cool dude. Josh, awesome. I have a lot of fun awesome, with him. Awesome, yeah, um, absolutely. Is it, is it some, something like Send Jim? The it, only it? thing similar with us and Send Jim is the same thing similar with Send Jim and the UPS store. We both send mail. Okay. And that's it. But as far uh, as – you get, we, we get asked that all the time because Josh, they built a great piece of software. We do it a little bit different. We get in more with the data and the targeting yeah, yeah, and yeah. the EDDM and the, you That's know, cool. every tool's got it's like its that next level. Exactly. Yeah. But the most similar thing, we have to answer this all the time, we're as similar to them as we are to Xerox. So you just got a beautiful user interface to get it to get it fulfilled. We understand how hard that print can be. And oh, our, dude. We, I used to go to the post office. I don't, I've got killer ideas. The hard part is the harder the idea the more it gets thrown in the back seat yep. and it doesn't get done. Yep. So exactly. yard signs are so tough and you've been dealing with my yard signs and they haven't been easy, but I said it's all front loaded because absolutely, I got some cool things with my manufacturers yeah. that I'm going to make it. You got to make it a habit. You got to make it automated. The consistency. And that's what I appreciate so much about what you put together because you facilitated so that every one of your locations is getting the signs they need on delivery right away. And they're, and, they're, and then I figured out a way to make sure I inspect what I expect, make sure they get placed at every house. Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing is the consistency in marketing. You know, we're all running our businesses, wearing a hundred hats, putting out fires, moving and shaking. When you can get these marketing campaigns systemized, and that's what we pride ourselves in at Dope Marketing is Tommy's got a couple projects, right? He knows he can call me and go, Dave, we got to get this done. And whether the turnover time in the project is three days or maybe some of them take three months, once they're done, they're done and they're continuing. It's not, Tommy's not the type of guy that tries something once and is like, oh, maybe this didn't work or didn't, I've never tried it. There's a plan behind all this stuff to have it happen consistently because that's what breeds trust. Well, you know, the, the deal is, you, the one thing you haven't mentioned, which is my favorite thing of the world, is Google. And Google takes time, especially yeah. SEO. Yeah. And you need a good site. You know, my cousin, Rachel, awesome chick, she found me a trainer, because she's a trainer in Chicago. Yeah. And she's like, I went through 100 of them, because not, first of all, a lot of them won't come to your building, so they, this guy comes to my shop. Yep. But the cool thing is, she's like, his site was amazing. It showed all of his awards and the, the dietitian and the habits he creates. Yeah. And having a good website, all that that means, if your direct mail's It'll work a lot better if you got a good online reputation and you got a presentable website. Because people just want to do the research. Google gets a lot of the credit for this stuff. That's why I sit like this next to so many people that want to sell me marketing. And they go, yeah, you know, the stats probably aren't that accurate. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I can't even get a 10 to 1 ratio at least, then don't try to tell me Google's getting all the credit. Yeah. You know, TV, radio, and billboards are different. I don't even put my, I don't even put my number on them. Uh, like my numbers, it's branding, not a, right? Yeah. It's just the yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? You know what we're switching to with the bands is I'm switching to local numbers. I got my eight four four eight one garage. We talked about this. The call tracking. Well, tracking is huge. Eight four four, but eight four four eight one garage. But people that my clients that I love the most, the sixty five year olds. Yeah. They don't like to call an eight hundred number. No, they don't. There's no intimacy. It's not personal. It's not. It's not. You're not supporting your neighborhood. Exactly. It's not the local we guys. do something really cool, and this is going back to what you were asking about our software. It's another really cool thing we do with the yard signs we print. So in the Twin Cities area, we have a bunch of different area codes. You know, the first three digits in front of your phone yep. number. So we have six five one in St. Paul. We have six one two in Minneapolis. We have nine five two in the local suburbs. What do we do with our signs, Tommy? We put a tracking number of all the signs we put in St. Paul. It's a 651 number that forwards to our office. Minneapolis, it's a 612 number. You got to. Western you got to. And here's the big thing is 
I've looked at coupons, Valpac, Money Mailer, yep. and they'll have nine freaking area codes. And it's like, if you're mailing to this area, don't you understand that you could put just the one area code That's for that? It. Because I don't want to call this huge national company. Personally, I kind of do like to call national companies because they got their stuff together. Yep. Stuff together. Um, but, you know, we've gotten over a lot of stuff here, and this is, like, this is a lot for the listeners. And this is the first deep dive, I think, on the podcast. We talked about kind of everything from direct mail to postcards to uh, well, postcards and uh, yard signs. Yep. So there's a lot of information here. And I want to get as much from you as possible, all your 10 pagers, anything we can put on the oh, website. Absolutely. And um, we'll, we'll possibly set up a deal. We haven't done it yet. But if you go to dopemarketing.com forward slash H S M home service millionaire. We'll probably have some cool deals for you guys. Listen, you got to just give it a shot. And the thing is he nailed it on the head. Consistency is the key. Now let's go into the final chapter of the podcast here. This is a fun stuff for me. If you were a porn star, what would I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) I I was on a podcast the other day. They said, if you actually, let's do this. They said, if you were a porn star, what would your name be? And I said, I watched, I watched Rocky the day before. I said, Nostradamus Balboa. And I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but uh, what would you be? <laughs> Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack! I'll go over my sneakers. All right, nice. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up here. Um, first thing I ask is, if anybody wants to reach out to you personally, what's the best way to do it? Dopemarketing.com. Uh, every everything's directed to our website, Facebook page. We got our team manages the Facebook. Page so there, well. there's dope marketing. So dope marketing.com. And yep. then if they want to just shoot the shit with you, what's the best way? Yeah. i uh, message directly on the Facebook page. Let them know that, uh, you saw us on Tommy's podcast and my team will connect us direct. I'm not, I don't big time people. I'll get on the phone with you directly and you don't have to go through seven layers. <laughs> message the Facebook page or say, I saw, I saw Dave on Tommy's podcast. I got a question for him. The team will get you with me directly. And the next big question I have is uh, three books. I ask every single person on the podcast, give me the three books. And I told you what you couldn't say. So uh, the e myth. You know, I love the e myth. It's it's my favorite business book, and it's probably everybody's. It's like a, a go to. But I just that one comes up almost every podcast. And you know what's cool is Michael Gerber was sitting in the same seat you're at. You can't sniff it. <laughs> but uh, the chair. <laughs> uh, so I'd say. One of the best books that I always go back to, and I actually read it with my kids now, because it's like a quick two-hour read. It's called The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver. If you need a a quick refresher on why you're in the position you need, or just a great book, quick read. The Go-Giver is amazing. Um, A book that I've been going back to a lot lately is uh, Dan Kennedy's Marketing to the Affluent. Oh, yeah. That's a great book. In times that we're in right now, when you can understand the importance in any business of keeping a consistent message to the affluent because it doesn't matter depression, recession, high economy, whatever. Isn't that a no BS book? No BS. No, no BS. BS guide, no BS guide to marketing to the affluent. Yep. yep. Um, that is one of my favorite books in the world because the gems in there. You can go back in there and uh, you you can go back in there and really really dive in deep and understand that if you focus a good percentage of your time or any percentage of your time on the rich. Just on the stick rich. with them. They will. Well, look, I've got a customer that, and I know you got to have your third book, and we got a time for this. So, I got a customer that gives me a million bucks a year. Why don't I just go get a couple hundred of those? That's a quarter billion dollars. So I understand what you're saying, but I'm going to hire a team to do that. Bingo. And, and and the big thing is, if you you do all these things, none of them get done. If you're responsible for everything, none get done. So. I was thinking about this the other day in my break room because the garbage wasn't closed and something was messy. And I'm like, if I have one person, this is one of their sole jobs to just do this, it gets done. Uh, but I love that book too. I mean, literally, the affluent, it's the 80 20 Pareto. It's just, Every it time. works. Every it works. Time. You go after the largest amount of your money comes from 20% of your clients. And just pick up those zip codes, right? One of the easiest things you can do, or here's a little pro tip take your customer list, export it from your CR, service site, and house call, or wherever. Download your customer list, sort it by zip code, take your top three to five zip codes that you're already doing work, get a list of homeowners in those zip codes and focus more on it. Just duplicate the results. Our job as a business owner is not to go, as much as we believe it is, it's not to go out and reinvent the wheel. Figure out what you're doing well, do more of it, and spend well, time on those apps. This is what's called regression testing. And what you do is you compile all of your data 
You take the largest amount of average tickets, you find out who that avatar is, and what you're gonna find out is there's significant no. data in the outliers that'll tell you, is it age? Is it income? Is it credit score? Is it did they refinance? And as you start to put those two and two together, here's the thing, if you're like me, you got work too much work, yep. and I started turning my marketing brain into recruiting. Right? Recruiting. Yep. Now, yep. now here's it. You could kill two birds with one stone. Recruit and advertise. Same time. Hey, listen. We're always looking for great employees. If you're looking for a great job and you have a conscience and you're ethical and you're moral, A1 is the place to go. Yep. So you could kill two birds with one stone. Now, Every time we do that, even in the local Facebook mom groups, right? We're looking to scale up for the fall. We need some new technicians. Every time we post about the employees and hiring, you get a handful of leads from that same post. Oh, I saw you guys were hiring, and I kind of need this done at my house. And it's you know all what? The- this is I get I need to do this podcast all night. You know what's so fun is I'm just always thinking about cool things, and I there's these. <laughs> I'm not gonna give this one up, but I'll, I'll give a clue to it. So you could go to groups, and there's there's scanners that actually scrape. And they'll pull the email so you can retarget because you can't advertise in groups. Correct. But there's they'll ways to get around. Quick. Them. Yes, there so, are. Well, well, there's no way you can't serve up ads. Correct. And you're not supposed to be posting things in there that are. I got a little trick for that too. Well, the <laughs> the before and after is in like the city of Gilbert, but we're gonna have. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah, talk about yeah, that. Yeah. What's your bonus what? episode? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, third, 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 I got a split. So rage. I don't know if anyone else has a hard time getting along with humans all the time or gets upset about things. The book Rage is a great book to identify, you know, whether you, we're not saying that everyone in the world has anger issues, but you can identify some points of kind of rationalizing that like that chick with five kids in the car with out of state plates and the Kia minivan that's all dinged up that cut you off. Like she thought she was right too today (laughs) and being a little bit more compassionate about that type of thoughts that, and then, uh, Negotiating like your life depends on it. The, from the FBI guy. I don't know. That's um, what's it? Uh, the state. I don't know. Just taking the outcome. That book is called Dang the, It. The yellow with the target. Yeah, 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 yeah. That book is. Um, oh man, I just freaking. Come on. I can't think of it right now. Yeah. Well, now, right now you guys got some homework to look it you up. You just look up the FBI negotiator. The FBI negotiator. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's. Uh, he's looking it up right now. Um, so between that and rage, it's my my third combined. He's got it. Got He's deep. going for it. There it is. Never split the difference. Never split, Never split, the, split difference. the difference. All right, we yes. got it. That's that's uh. Never right. split the difference is like you learn how to negotiate, and, and, and there's so many key aspects to it. Of like, you know, I really like to watch negotiate is the Pawn Stars. Oh, dude, I love it because the first thing they ask is, "How much were you looking for it?" Well, Tommy, how am I supposed to do that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Then, then you ask questions. <laughs> Here's the thing I always, well, I've sold, I bought and sold thousands of cars. Yep. And the one thing I've always said is when I negotiate with somebody, the first thing I'll ask them is what, you know, I, I know the price. And it's hard because you don't, first thing you do is beat it up. What do you say, Rick? You beat it up and you go, what are you, what are you looking for? Dad, dad, and I was around my dad a lot of the time. I'm like, dad, this thing needs tires. And he's like, Tommy, that's not the worst. Yeah. It needs CV joints, it needs this, it needs a windshield, it needs this. I'm like, Dad, how much are tires for this? He's like, 700 bucks. So I'm taking this off the bill and they're going, and I, I make ridiculous offers. Right. Like on a $4,200 truck, I'd offer nice. 600 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd meet, but, but they'd go, yeah, right. But now they're open more to that 1900. You get them right in there, right? You gotta get them <laughs> yeah, to where yeah, you want yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's fun. That, that, and that book will will help if for anyone, whether you do the sales in your business or the never marketing split the or difference. whatever, never split the difference will give you the, the ammo you need. One of the, my biggest things. It's so funny, things, I was just talking about splitting the difference. <laughs> Sometimes it works out. One of the biggest things that I learned from that book, uh, your, one of your biggest negotiation tactics you can use is like, well, Tommy, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to do that? I like that. Tommy, you want you, you want you want to give me six hundred for this car? How how can I do that? Well, you know what I always say is, uh, if a doctor sell like a doctor, first of all, You're talking about so sell like a doctor. Yeah. I told you this because yeah. the, the yeah. deal is, it's called malpractice. If the doctor sell, if they diagnose you wrong, they lose their license. Correct. So if we if we but they gather intel. They're learning about the us. Chart, your and give height, the right weight, thing. Your... Give the right prescription to the clients, and you'll have clients for life. Yep. And the, the the secret is learning with the clients that need the most prescriptions. You know what I mean? Bingo. Like the big the big ticket sales. Those affluent homeowners. 
Affluent. Affluent's a key word here. You know how many books I have? I just bought 10 books with the word affluent in them because I'm obsessed with, I have too many clients. I need less that pay more. Another thing we were talking about last night is getting that where you look at, not for you, but any business owner, right? It's like the best problem you could have is too many leads. You have a good problem to solve. Well, yeah. But now you can look at that and it say, where's the, up. yeah. How can I identify the clients where it's the lowest cost of acquisition, but the highest profit margin and yep. focus on duplicating them? Yeah, or, or I don't care if it's a high cost of acquisition if I'm getting a huge return. It's all relative, it's percentages. Think percentages instead of dollars. Absolutely. You know, the last thing I do, and I gotta tell you, this is the first time I think I've had somebody that could keep up with me, maybe even surpass me, <laughs> um, as that far as energy goes. Uh, I always give you the last, five minutes or three minutes, whatever you need, is usually about taking action, going out there and doing something that's gonna motivate somebody to change. Yep. Uh, there's a good book that I also wanted to recommend and I'm reading it right now, it's called Willpower. And the one thing is, not a lot of people have willpower. And it's hard, yeah. four, four hours a day we all are fighting our willpower. Usually it's about food first, yep. then it's about, I guess, sleep, and then there's sexual things that the book talks about. Yep. Um, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, We'll, we'll give you the last hurrah here, and I might add something at the end. So go ahead and take us away. Take you away, Tommy. That's big shoes to fill. So the best advice that I could give to anyone, I reflect back on, you know, me starting my first business or looking at people that they were where I wanted to be and getting really impatient about that. Like thinking that, like, you know, we all believe that we're one of the smartest people in the room. We all know that success is kind of relative because if someone's done it, we can go do it, we're all humans. <sighs> disciplining, I know for me, like disciplining myself and realizing that like the good things that I want take a little bit more time, like they all make sense in my head, but it's the execution, the willpower, the strategy of like making something happen and making it come to fruition. One thing that I can reflect back on is like in the first couple of years of my home service business was just seeing other people that I thought, whether it was like, our business is better, or we provide a better service, or we're more capable, or we should have this success. Really identifying the things in your business that you're good at and that you're not good at and being humble enough to remove yourself or add other people in your business, whether you can afford it or not, but removing yourself from the things that either you're not good at. It's easier to say the things you don't want to do, but the self-awareness that comes from like understanding like I'm not the guy that's great in the day-to-day -day of a business. Like the monotonous, yeah, like operations. the customer service, the operations, the management, the patience with things messing up that I've spent. You ever find yourself as a business owner, you're like, you get so mad when things go wrong because you're like, I've spent so much time on fixing this and it still goes wrong and I just can't believe oh, yeah. that I have to go back. And like, I know for me, I have to remove myself from those type of discussions or those type of situations because I don't bring the right vibe to the table when a guy who just wanted to show up and do the best that he could, like everyone makes mistakes and then I find myself like not tearing someone down or yelling and swearing or being a jerk to a person, but being very hard on the company for not having the system in place that I felt like I've already invested the time in and it should work exactly like I want it to. A lot of responsibility comes with a tax ID and the ego that comes along with going to get an EIN. It's like, I think that's what the E stands for, the EIN is ego. It's like, you gotta remember to remove the way you feel from the decision make, it's just business. And whether, you know, we'd all love to say it's nine to five, that's not really true. I think a lot of us are ticking all day long, but it's like really being able to understand that like, it's your responsibility as a business owner to set like like everything's on your shoulders. No one else messed up. The the best thing you can do is take responsibility is when things go wrong. And so being able to understand in your business where you play the best role for wherever your business is at. You could have started yesterday, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, whatever. Understanding your role in your business, removing your ego, removing the things that maybe whether it's the things you're good at, the things you aren't good at, but coming to terms with the fact that like we really do get to do what we want to all day. And that's my favorite thing about being a business owner is like, I get to do what I want to all day, whenever I want to, because I put myself in that position. And it's like- Well, that takes time though. And, absolutely. And what I would say is, don't forget <laughs> to add to that, is build an org chart 
and start hiring the things you hate the most. Right. Whether that's accounting. Right. But you wear all the hats from day one. And hire them before you're ready to hire them. But hire around your weaknesses. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for me was a personal assistant. Yeah. And more, more because yeah. look, it, it more it was able to amplify my time. So, dude, this has been awesome. I really appreciate awesome you coming on, brother. Johnny. Good Thanks stuff. For having me. So check out. We're going to have some deals. Go to uh, dopemarketing.com forward slash HSM. See you guys later. Thanks.